you might even see a little spark in my eyes when I talk about the past life. There's so many things out in the world that are pulling you so many different directions. We uh, began going out, going out to clubs. For me, that those were just temporary joys, but at that time, that was my life. My life ended up in the ditch over and over again, and I realized that was because of decisions that I was making. I got saved when I was 16, but I wasn't, you know, it was kind of like, what do you do with this relationship with God? I had to understand if, if I was believing all these things simply because I was taught them or because I really truly believed them. As a scientist, that's always been my focus, is to find a more truth, to discover more truth. So we approached it more like from an experiment. As a respiratory therapist, I unfortunately am exposed to a lot of death and people just hanging on to life by their fingernails. I feel like I have been there in my spiritual life. There was this kind of black hole uh, in the church uh, of people my age, people that, uh, that I could relate to. We decided to start small, just with a simple weekly Bible study, asking questions like uh, is is there more to life than what we're experiencing I mean Acts is a great example of, of Christian community they weren't just showing up for church once a week they were actively serving together and we came up with this this vision the concept of the life experiment is kind of based on a three-dimensional approach we have the, the spiritual the connecting to God we have the social, the connecting with each other, and we have the service. I didn't intend to change religions. When I came into the life experiment, it was because they were real people. I've been to many large churches that weren't that way, and I was looking for more, and I needed, I needed a closeness with my church family. They very much made sure they were involved in your life, to the point of being obnoxious sometimes, but they were still involved. And it was involved where you knew they cared and they wanted to be part of your life. I've learned to live what I've always believed. That is, faith, it is a day-to-day -day thing. I don't have to tell my kids I'm a Christian. They figured it out on their own. And they figured it out by how I treat them. Coming from, you know, this mega church, I did the youth group things and I did all the motions and stuff, but as far as reading my word or having a prayer life, I didn't gain those things. It was still driven by emotion. If I had walked into a seven day Adventist church um, and there was not a young group here to embrace me, I definitely would have left the church. Having a young group of people that are around your age that have either been through what you're going through in some way or aspect, or are going through it with you, it's amazing, it's amazing, you know. You kind of feel spoiled a little bit. They asked us the day we came in, they said, hey, how are you, where are you from? Can I get your number? Midweek on Wednesday, I got a message saying, hey, how's your week going? I'm like, wow, that's kind of weird. This guy's messaging me from church. I'm like, these guys, they know how to follow up. They must really care. When he was taking me to church, I saw the differences in the actions of other people. Everyone was very loving. The struggle with her was this mold of a Christian that I was telling her to be, but I was breaking that mold every evening. We'd go out and do things. Knowing God gave my identity of what it was to be a father to my children. It gave me my identity of how I should treat my wife. We can actually go to people that are God-fearing, that use the Bible as the role model and as the instruction manual of what we need to do, and that has made the largest impact in our lives.